Even though the Charlotte Hornets have been a complete train wreck all season long, finally, finally we might have a little bit of hope. Other than LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball has been the only thing keeping me going as a Charlotte Hornets fan this year, not gonna lie. Even though he's been inefficient at times, fighting through injury to still have a very, very solid year. But his main man, his wingman, his duo is coming back to Charlotte soon. And I cannot wait for Airbnb to be reunited. Now, they've also got a couple of other pieces. Kelly Oubre had a very good year this year, although he is shut down at this point. Mark Williams having a very strong uh, rookie campaign. They've got a bunch of other young guys as well as we do have a decision to make on P.J. Washington this offseason. Uh, so we're going to be talking all about the Charlotte Hornets today. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment as well, sticking around for the full video. Now let's go ahead and get started looking at you know, the state of the Charlotte Hornets. It's been no secret that we have been beyond bad this year at 17 and 43, and we do have some difficult decisions to make in the offseason this year regarding guys like P.J. Washington and Kelly Oubre Jr. However, if Miles Bridges can come back and play for the Hornets again, that would that would basically completely turn the season around, even though it is you know basically already lost with 22 games left to play. Now he says he could be back as soon as March. Uh, honestly, I don't really want him to come back and contribute to us winning. Uh, this is a guy that averages 20 a game with 7 rebounds on 50% shooting from the field. So by no means do we want him to come back and start giving us some extra wins that would knock us out of the Wibanyama sweepstakes. But it would be exciting to see uh, LaMelo and Miles Bridges back on the court together and also starting to build up some chemistry, get it back going for next year. I would be interested to see the whole contract situation with Miles, what, what happens there, because I think he's still a restricted free agent. I know we still have his off uh, his rights, so I'm not sure uh, the whole situation there. If somebody does know, let me know down in the comments below. But as far as I know, he's coming back to Charlotte soon. Uh, don't know what the pay cut will be like, but... Uh, now, the future at center would be Mark Williams, 7.6 points per game, 5.6 rebounds, 1 steal, and 1.2 blocks per game this year. Uh, been very exciting to watch his development throughout the year. He was a guy that went to Greensboro, came back a completely different player. In 16 minutes this year, shooting at 63% from the field and 73% from the free throw line. Uh, now, his per 36 numbers are even better than his just regular, you know, everyday numbers. 17 a game, 13 and a half rebounds, two steals, and 2.7 blocks. That is the most promising big man we have seen in Charlotte in quite some time. Uh, now the free agent decisions that we do have to make this offseason are between uh, PJ and Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, PJ averaging about 15 points a game this year, 4.6 rebounds, a couple of assists. He's having one of his better seasons of his young career. Um, he's been efficient shooting the ball, 44% from the field, 37% from three. Still getting his, you know, block or so per game that we've seen him accustomed to as, you know, a very solid defender. And I would really like to bring back PJ if we can get him at the right price because, you know, I don't want to be paying crazy money for this guy. He's not really you know, a $20 million a year type guy. But if we can get him, you know, 12, 13, 14 million, would be beyond pleased with that. Now, Kelly Oubre Jr. averaging about 20 a game this year. As inefficient as he is, it's still a career high, 20 points per game, 41% from the field, 32% from three. Uh, so overall, a good, promising season from Kelly. We will need more of this in the future, and I would also like to re-sign him at the right price. Both of these guys are not somebody I want to overpay for. They're not that big of a need to bring back, but it would be nice to have them both back. Now, guys that it is time to move on from for sure, and I'm thinking that's going to be uh, Gordon Hayward, and Terry Rozier. Gordon, 14 points a game, 4.5 rebounds, 4 assists. He's uh he, he's on the way out. We owe him 30 million for the rest of this year and then next year as well. But finally, that'll be the end of his contract. 45% from the field, 31% from three. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he's not been he's not been good this year at all. Uh, but like I said, 60 million uh, for the rest of this year and next year. Uh, now Terry Rozier is a guy that I would not mind at all keeping. Because he is a, he can be a very good rotation piece, averaging 22 a game this year, 4.2 rebounds, 5.3 assists. But for the majority of the time that he has been playing, Lamelo has been out, so that could, you know, be a reason that his numbers are much higher than normal. Um, you know, decent efficiency, not great, about the same as Kelly. But 
overall, I mean, four years, $96 million left. Uh, for Terry, after this year, three years, $72 million. So he's probably a guy that I'm looking to move on from uh, because he doesn't really fit our timeline, and we could find LaMelo a different backcourt mate. You know, if we don't get Wibanyama, maybe we get a Scoot Henderson or a Thompson twin in the draft this year to help LaMelo out. Speaking of LaMelo, he has been heating up a lot lately. 24 points per game, 8.4 assists, 6.4 rebounds a night. He has been one of... You know, like I said, he's really been the only bright spot for the Hornets this year other than maybe Mark Williams. But his efficiency is coming up, 41% from the field, 37% from three, 1.3 steals per game. So he's playing, you know, a little bit of defense as well as shooting 11 threes per game, which is wild. But he's still only 21 years old, which is a good thing. Barely old enough to vote, and he is still giving these dudes buckets. Now, the draft. Uh, We are projected to have a top five pick this year. And any of these guys right here would be available to us. Either the Thompson Twins alongside LaMelo Ball would definitely be something I could sign up for long term. Cam Whitmore, you know, Scoot Henderson is a guy that if Wibanyama is off the board, that's the guy I want. Because I can see him alongside LaMelo Ball as a secondary scorer. You know, Melo Moore of the point guard can really see the floor, dish out dimes, while Scoot Henderson can play the Terry Rozier role. Uh, but at a better, younger, cheaper uh, clip, basically. Uh, Cam Whitmore, like I said, very athletic wing. Brandon Miller is a guy that, you know, Scoo Henderson's gone. Amin Thompson's gone. He's probably my number four prospect right now for the Hornets, a wing that can really light it up from outside. And then Azor Thompson is number five, but he's not far. Any of these five, and I will be ecstatic that we can add them to the lineup. Even Cam Whitmore, I'd be very excited to have him as well. So that's what the draft situation is looking like right now. Uh, for the Hornets, the rest of the way, you know, it's a tank for Obanyama, so we got to play the youth. We've already talked about Mark Williams. Uh, he's a very, very special prospect. I feel like I really like him going forward. Uh, but James Booknight, guys that we've drafted over the last couple of years, Book Knight in particular, because he was the 11th overall pick. We have to play them. Kai Jones, he's the reason that we don't have a first-round pick in next year's draft because we traded back into the first round to pick him up. He's done nothing so far in the NBA. Same thing with JT Thor. Bryce McGowan's has shown some flashes. He looks like he could be uh, an NBA player for a long time off the bench. So maybe that's the second rounder that we hit on. But Book Knight, Thor, Kai Jones, I want to see them getting big minutes the rest of the season just to just to see what they got because you know we invested heavy draft capital, especially in Book Knight and Kai Jones, uh, to get those guys. So. I'd at least like to see what they can do. Now, we also have the Nuggets pick, which will be a mid to late 20s selection because the Nuggets are one of the best teams in basketball this year, and we will not have a first-round pick next year. Uh, We do have a lot of seconds. We acquired some seconds at the deadline in exchange for Jalen McDaniels, who I did not want to see gone, and then Mason Plumlee. Uh, So we'll see what these two got up their sleeve with Cupcheck and Michael Jordan. Uh, But, you know, they got LaMelo Ball. He's the future for sure. Miles Bridges, he's... You know, I hope he can come back uh, this year so we can start getting some chemistry, get back into NBA shape. Gordon and Terry, it's going to be time for them to go before long. Unfortunately, he did have to trade McDaniels, uh, but P.J. Washington and Kelly Oubre will wait and see what the free agent decision is on them. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment down below as it really help us out in the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.